Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, now video number two. Now I've got to start making some decisions and I have procrastinated so much over this, this um, project. I sort of, I can't quite work out where I'm heading with it. I don't really know what I want to make. I um, don't know where I want to end up. So I thought if I just sit down and have a fiddle um, I might sort of come up with an idea that lasted about five ten minutes and I thought no I'll just grab my camera I'll just turn it on and see where it goes so I, I apologize in advance if this particular video is a little bit uh, lackluster but I sort of need to just talk through my ideas with you and I reckon by the time I hear myself I will know where I'm going. That seems to be my, my style. So the first issue, not it's not an issue, it's consideration. The first consideration is these Edith Holding books are an odd shape. So it just um, is, I think this is what's stumping me. I don't want to have to cut a page. I was looking at this one. This is the first one that come out of this book. And this is the book I'm going to pull apart because when I got it second hand, a heap of the pages were already missing, but you know, up to 10, but there's still heaps, heaps and heaps here that I can use. So this is perfect to be my donor. Now I was looking at this page thinking, all right, if I cut this down, say by an inch, what do I, what do I lose? I'm going to lose not a lot, but I don't know. Then suddenly those words don't seem right up there. It'd be nice to read them. Am I being finicky? I know everyone just chops away and chops away. So I guess that was my first issue. So then I thought, well, I need to find a cover that allows me to keep it whole because obviously it is an issue for me. The other consideration was the pages that are printed out from this digital collection. Are they going to be too small for it? And in those first few minutes of me sitting here, they're not. So I'm happy about that because in my head, you know, when I'm thinking, doing the laundry and walking around and these pages would look silly mixed in with the originals left at their size, but they're not going to. They're actually gonna create quite a, an interesting layered effect. So that was the first thing, I'm pleased about that. Um, then it comes to the cover. And I thought, well, I need to find something big enough. And this is the only thing I had in my cupboard that is big enough. And if anything, it's slightly bigger, which is even better because you're really then left with the original cover. And uh, I've seen a lot of people, you know, do something with the cover because at least it's the right size. So, but we won't be using the cover this time, maybe another time, but we'll see how we go. Maybe, uh, I don't know. See, can you can hear it in my voice? I don't know where I'm heading here, but it doesn't matter. We'll find, find our path. So I found this, um, the doctor's book of food remedies. Um, found it at an op shop. As you can see, it's pretty old, but it's one of those books that's a good square size. Now, I often go to the cookbook section of an op shop and I look for books exactly like this because you can get heaps of novels and they're always a rectangle, but squares are good for when you're doing needlework and you want a bit more space to do some stitchery on. So that's why I grabbed this one for future needlework. Now, when was it printed? 2007. Not that that's even relevant, but anyway, this I believe is my cover. We will need to treat it in some way if we're going to glue paper to it because it's shiny. So it may need a coat of um, gesso just to give it a surface for a journal um, covering to uh, stick to it. Now, you could just put PVA glue over it and everything will stick, but eventually with your hands touching it, it could lift. It may not, depending on your PVA glue, but books like this, I tend to give it a coat of white paint just to knock back that shiny surface. You could also use fine sandpaper, which I've never actually tried. Maybe I'll try that. Um, 
give it a bit of a, a light sand. I've seen Andrea do that on um, from Artie Mays. Just buff it up a little bit. So I'm pretty sure this is my, my book. It's nice and thick, as in the spine. So there's plenty of room for probably three signatures. So she's going to be quite a, quite a monster. This is my dilemma. Do I want a monster? Do I cut this spine out? And that then allows me to do something tricky because I guess at the back of my head, stitching signatures into the spine is boring. We've all done it. We've done hundreds of them. There's heaps of videos on how to do it. I'm sort of looking for something a little bit odd to do, if that makes sense. So there you go, $2 from Binnie's. That's what I paid for it. So I'm thinking if I cut this spine out, that forces me to do something different on there. So that's another decision I need to make. And I think I'm going to do that because I know I'll be like, oh, yes, fold your signatures, stitch it in, yada, yada. So that's my decision made. I just want the covers. Getting rid of the spine. We'll then do something here in the way of I'm thinking either tabs or a big tab. I'd like to see the pages. Does that make sense? I'd like to see into the spine. And I think that's going to give me the ability to have a play with um, more texture. Because I'd like to pull a, a bit of lace and doilies into this as well. So, okay. Decision made. We're going to do that. The other thing that's been tossing around is journal number two idea. Now, I made this one um, a little while ago, and I really enjoyed it. And a lot of people, when they've come to hang out with me in the craft shop, and I say, in a craft shop, I don't have a craft shop, in my craft room, I say to them, you know, pick a journal off the shelf and we'll have a play, whether we make it or a portion of it. And a lot of people pick this one up. I think it's because it's just so different, and I sort of feel the same way about it. There's no rules with this. It's messy. It's uh, a little bit grungy. It sort of feels like a botanist's um, book. And I love the fact that Tracy labels sort of work all the way through it. So I'm tempted to actually do a bag journal as well. It sort of makes me break all the rules. So my next question was, can I find a bag big enough for these pages without cutting them down? And I do have one that is sorta, sorta okay. So that's, this is the second journal idea where I make a grungy field note as if she's sat down on the grass, she's popped this on her lap and she's just sketching down a few little random um, things. Now I have some Tim Holtz paper in my stash that you know, once again, it's in the stash. I really need to pull it out and use it. I even have some of the fabrics that go with this series and I dare not cut into them, but we're going to cut into them. There you go. There's another decision made. So, oh, why do I feel so weak? Goodness me. So, yeah, this is where I'm procrastinating. I've got two journals in my head. Maybe I just do the covers to start with and see where we go. Maybe, I, you know what the favourite part of making a journal is for me? Is the covers. It's how, how I can create something that looks completely different and um, push the boundaries of bringing paper, lace and fabric and stitchery all together. The insides of journals, yeah, that's, that's all right. But they become a little bit laborious for me. Unless you've got, you know, a heap of ephemera made. When you watch Gail, she's got these boxes and boxes of ephemera that she can just pull out and slide into um, journals. Well, that's great, but that is hours of work. And that girl, she spends so much time making ephemera. It's astounding. And I don't have that time. So I sort of always get to the inside of journals and go, mm, what am I going to do next? So that's, that's where my head's at. Have I got enough time to make the ephemera needed for two journals? Probably not. Do I need to? Probably not. Do I just work on the covers? Maybe that'll get it started. Okay. Now you can see where my head's been. 
it has been whirling around all of this sort of stuff. So, where what did we what did we get out of that? I don't know. I'm going to put this little journal behind me because it's definitely inspiration for something. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Am I? <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Man, do I achieve anything in this video? I don't know. Hang on a minute. Let me have a sip. Now that'll make me have to clear my throat, which is painful. All right. Let's just do something i'm going to put the papers these digitals to one side we know they're going to fit will they fit in the journal if there's a paper bag involved see i tore look i tore that with my ruler and then i was like no nah, i've got to make decisions where am i heading and turned on the video so that's as far as i got yeah the paper bag journal will fit that it's going to be a bit tight for these but maybe here we go let me have a look in this book again i just find this book so daunting so when i look at a page like that what do i see i see a journal card nice and easy or a pocket now what's on the other side okay so if i was to cut that across there that's a simple journal card and i've got um text at the bottom same on the other side so i could probably cover the text one side do a little collage make another journal card so that to me that's pretty simple this one here same sort of thing a journal card nothing on the back so not too bad okay now we've got a full view you know another thing that bugs me is this month the simple thing is to have a journal for every month but I don't journal so I don't need a journal for every month so what do you do with this do you include it or do you cut it out I you know I don't know if this is wrong and I'm gonna get in trouble but I tend to think that it's not needed to me the artwork is spectacular and when that word is not there it's like the artwork really sings I don't know if that's just me see what I mean I don't know I might get lynched by the Edith Holden police by saying that like I can see a place for it if you're doing a monthly journal for yourself or you know for selling that's great but I just feel that it's nearly an obstacle, meaning if you needed to cut a page down for height and that, and you said, okay, all of the monthly words are gone, that would give you a really easy decision that you could cut through there, maybe put a, a snippet of fabric to cover that little Y, and you're away. And now you've brought that page down in size so that it could fit easily within something that, you know, was a little bit more A4 folded in half size. So that's just my thoughts. I just sort of feel like they're a little bit inhibiting. Then you've got a page that really isn't very pretty this side. So you cut it and then you've got to hinge it to something else which does work, but is getting bigger again. Yeah, it's a really tricky, tricky project, Edith Holy. And I think that's why so many keep the book because, you know, it's, it's the working of the pages. You can, you know, turn it sideways and fold it in your spine of your journal, which is fine, but you only want a few pages like that. You don't want to have the whole Edith Holden collection sideways. That's my thoughts. So this page here, it's not a bad one to trim. You could probably sneak up here into the, the roots of these plants. So that would get rid of two inches of air. You could probably go into there and bring that down in size. But once again, oh goodness, double spread. 
Mm. Isn't it hard? Oh, don't like you. I grew up with a lot of snakes around because I was a farm girl. So that just brings back some crazy memories. Well, that's another story for another day. I've come so close to being bitten, it's just crazy riding the BMX bike around the farm. Um, these look like they'd be great for fussy cutting. They sort of look like you could pull them out individually. So that's an easy decision. Another beautiful page. Maybe I've got to start taking more pages out of the book and that will then in turn sort of give me a better look. Let's do that. Got to do something. I'm just sitting here procrastinating. Maybe if I pick up a, a tool, let's cut the book because we might even do something with this cover. So that's three covers that I could potentially have a play with. Now we're starting to look like I'm enjoying this process. So I'm just going to cut, cut that out of there. My blade's not real sharp. Got a few tools that sort of need upgrading, replacing or maintenance at the moment. I've been working so hard that I feel like I need to spend a day going through all my tools and even paint brushes and, and just seeing if they either need to be binned or a little bit of maintenance or a new blade. I just feel like everything's getting a little tired. scissors so this video probably is going to be a little boring but I'm sure you all go through this process when you've got an idea and you've got to flesh it out a little bit I think that's sort of part of junk journaling and I'm gonna try and film you know two or three videos in a row so that way they're ready to go and whenever there's no journal of stitchery video um, I've got two or three of these up my sleeve so I can just slide them in and it'll be just random days throughout the month of August. So I've sort of got the plan of doing that. So today is Saturday, uh, the last Saturday of July. So I've got all weekend to play with this and I've already filmed one video and that's all the books. It's up and sitting there ready for the 1st of July. I think it'll stay for the 1st of July because um, I'm sort of up to speed with my journal of stitchery, the Christmas. If you're new to my channel, go and check out the Journal of Stitchery Facebook page um, where everyone posts the work they've been doing. And if that does not inspire you to pick up a needle and thread, wow, the... the, the pictures that are coming up from everyone and I mean everyone I just oh every one of them has an element that just gives me a fuzzy feeling it's really I don't know is that odd I really feel that about this project it's like um I haven't seen a bad word spoken everyone seems to be comfortable at the level at which they work and even when you see some novices come in that are, you know, maybe picking it up for the first time, you can always tell because they'll say, can someone tell me what slow stitch is? And then once they get that, they're like, ah, and then away they go. And their first piece you can see there, they're just starting to feel their way. And the second piece, because I sort of pick a few that I follow the journey of their um, stitchery, and um, yeah, by the third piece, it's like, oh, they've got it. They have got it. And you can see a style coming. It's brilliant. Even though all we're doing is putting down random pieces of, um, random pieces of, um, you know, fabric and lace. And yeah, it's really cool. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this spine out. It's itty bitty. It's not not any good for anything because it's be barely an inch. And before I commit to it, I'm just going to make it disappear because it is not needed. But the cover is a good size for, um, you know, Edith because she could slide back in there a little bit. Even if I don't do it, it's a good size for a journal of stitchery. Maybe we do an Edith journal of stitchery. Oh, goodness me. This project. See what I mean? You just... I'm going to cut that divot out. I cut in the wrong spot, so you really should be taking it right back to the flat edge of the spine. So I'm just going to slide my knife down there. And that's pretty good. Oh, sorry, Edith, but it's okay. It is just a book. There's thousands of them out there. And like I said, if you can't find a book, go on to Etsy and type in Edith Holden Digital Prints and you will find a heap that are very um, like lifelike, you know, where they've used Edith's work as an inspiration and created a kit that you could definitely use and, you know, a novice would probably not even realise that it's not an Edith Holding. Okay, so the way I'm going here, I'm getting three covers for a project that I don't even know where it's heading. Oh, it's hilarious. It's all good. Okay. Now that Edith Holding book is shiny too. So it will probably need a treatment. I just don't know if my PVA glue is as good as some of them I've had in the past. I'm getting really low on PVA glue, so it's probably a good reason to buy another good one. That one I purchased when I was on holiday because it's all I could get. It was at like a $2 shop. So that's ooh, double gingerbread. Double ginger gingerbread. How is that a remedy? Food remedies. Okay, so it's steak and spinach salad with pomegranate. Hmm. Anyway, stay focused, Corinne. That's good because I need a glue book that's going to give me some good sized pages to glue on. So that's great for the project if I do get into the ephemera side of things. Now, let's get rid of this cut spine as well so I don't want to be inhibited or do I keep it no boring we all know how to stitch in signatures boring boring I just made a couple journals for some um, friends that have want to gift them to some rallies and I just kept it simple, you know. They'll, they'll, they're beautiful, don't get me wrong. But they, um, they didn't really inspire me. Oh, look at that little bit of fabric down here. That's interesting. That's that little, little bit that you see at the top and bottom of a book. All right. It's all yucky and dirty. Do I keep that? No, I don't need to keep it, for goodness sakes. Okay, so there's our second cover, which we can then expand and do what we will with. All right, so that's two. Now this envelope, what's its story? The other thing I need to do is a heap of um, tea dyeing paper. I don't use tea or coffee. I use Parisian essence. Um, there's a video on that in my playlist. Um, I, I like Parisian essence because it's um, got no smell about it. I, I love coffee. Don't get me wrong. I don't care if it's coffee dyed paper. I love the fact that you can smell that. Um, but I've had people I've made journals for in the past and they, um, 
don't like coffee. So that's what sort of made me start thinking about alternatives. And tea, I find, A, I don't drink it, so I don't have it readily available. Not that you can't get tea anyway, but um, it's, it's uh, very pale. And I tend to like a little bit more color depth to my papers. So tea is not really an option for me. It's good for fabrics if you want to just get a slightly yellow look, which I might have to actually do with some um, laces for this because they're probably a little bit new bright. I don't have a lot of antique laces. That's another cover I had in my mind too. Um, a heap of laces stitched down and then go from there. So I think it's going to be a video of different covers. <clears throat> now I'm going to open up the end of this. So I've removed the handle. And I'm now opening up the bottom of this bag. Get you a few extra inches. Okay. Now you've got a couple options when you've got your bag now open and it's just a tube. You can make it even bigger by folding out that gusset. So now you've got a really big journal. You can go even bigger this side. So you've got a massive piece of paper. Um, you can leave the gussets in and they become like a file folder. Is that the right word? So when you look into the end of your bag, I'll come around this side. When you look into the end of the bag, this sort of becomes like a divider. So you put some papers this side, like so. And you can put some papers the other side if they were the right sort of width like that so it sort of becomes like a little filing cabinet on the side of your journal depends too if you stitch along the very top as well so once again lots of decisions to make so let's decide what we're going to do with this bag are we I think I'm gonna open it out just to get rid of a little bit of bulk so that it's completely flat Now what am I doing? <laughs> oh goodness, have a sip of coffee. There's so much you can do with these things. It's like, is that tricky? Is that good? Should I try that? Okay. Just give me a moment. I'm gonna go quiet for a bit. my let's tear down a page I can't decide what to do with the bag I'm going to finish tearing down this page because I guess that is my my typeset my minimum maximum page size because it would be a shame not to use some of these digitals in it. So let's just tear that down. Scrapbook paper, fabric, all those other elements, they can be cut to size without any fear of losing any gorgeous artwork. But when you're using these digital pages that have that journal look about them, you really need them first as your size. Okay, all right, so that's that's our little one. Now, you know what I'm thinking? 
so okay i'll start again i've opened up the gusset at the bottom i've removed the handles at the top i've now spun it around and folded it this way because i think i've got two journals here two journal covers let's have a look where's my So the newbies, what I'm doing here is burnishing it. And you can use a credit card, you can use your ruler, your top your edge of your scissors, or a little tool that came with this um, Tim Holtz back plate. And what you're doing is you're creasing it. Now, in the process of doing that, there's all fibres in here because paper's made of fibres, and they are laid out nice and flat but then you're creating a fold and you want that fold to be nice and sharp and um, those little fibers need manipulating into that shape now you can do it just you know with your fingers but it's just not quite making the fibers split and change direction which is pretty much going this way and then turning and coming back so by using one of these tools you're really making those fibers change and stay there. So you get a nice sharp edge on your fold. So that's why you do that. If you're wondering why everyone pulls out these burnishing tools. So that's pretty good. If I was to do a cut there and there, yeah, let's rip down this second Goodness me, I'm stuff everywhere here. Let's rip down this second page. I'm going to make two journals out of that big bag. It was too big. And I've already got big books, book covers. So let's do a small little... Um, bag journal and we'll get two of them which will be fun challenging lots of ideas then okay so just to double check I could have just measured and done the maths on it but I just want to make sure yeah that will work okay so let's just fold that for a moment just to get my halfway point and this is going to be a little a little um little journal okay so did i make any decisions well the decision i made is i'm making one two three four journals and you can see why my brain was a bit of a mess i didn't know what what to do because every page within the Edith Holding world in those books is um, got its own challenges. And I didn't want to just make a heap of ephemera and, and um, have nowhere really to put it because, yeah, a sort of ephemera is one thing, but you've got to have somewhere to put it, don't you? And if it turns out that I've got a heap of pages left, well, then I won't feel like I've not used the book to its entirety to get out of this um, one Edith book for journals, potentially. I'm really liking that idea. So I just want to have a little look now at where we proceed from here. Because see how we've got the gusset corner there? That's a nice opportunity for something... So maybe that could be folded back like it wants to go that way. And that becomes a tuck on the cover of the journal. So we can incorporate something a bit creative that way. I'm liking that idea. Yeah, so. And then this one, maybe we just bring it to the inside. So on the back cover, there is... A little tuck yeah 
I like that. And they still fit in here really well. And if anything, I could probably make that a fraction bigger just in case it gets a bit full and wants to round itself out. Oh, I like that. The back's bigger than the front. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. That's really cool. That's a bit random. Yeah, and if those pages do start to sneak out due to it getting full, i got a lip here that I could easily put a trim or some lace or some stitching down there that would look pretty neat, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And I've got a little tuck there for something. So yeah, love that. Now what can we do that's different with this guy? Um, maybe we just make them both fold to the inside with a little tuck or a flip out doesn't have to be stuck down it could have something attached and it opens again yeah I like that idea that's something creative to play with and maybe this side does the same okay so I just give that all a really good burnish now my bag is still open, but that's okay. That'll all probably get stitched down or glued, so I'm not too worried about that. So this little journal, his tucks go to the inside. Yeah. This little one, we've got one to the outside, one to the inside, two different sizes. So that's something interesting to play with. A slightly different heights. How did I manage that? But the papers are still fine, so that's okay. I don't know. Considering I folded it in half. Good one. Okay, so we've got two paper bag covers. We've got the Edith book cover. And then even bigger, we've got the remedy. So that's good. I can now confidently go through my um, process of pulling pages out to add to a journal. Um, don't cut, perfect, in they go. Want to preserve the entirety of the image. This one too can be that, but also if I could trim a little bit off here and there, it wouldn't matter. So that's what this one's going to be. And these are going to be all the bits that just just are like the leftovers, the, the scraps, the could easily cut down to a, a small page, but would look silly in a, a very big book. So that's where I think we're at. What I'm going to do in the meantime, um, I guess, is just prep a few of these papers. So they're done. I've got plenty of glue pages if I need to, you know, glue and do things like that. Actually, that's not a glue page. That's the Edith page. So don't be doing that. Let's just put the cover around it so that I don't make a crucial error and stab it with a, um, what do they call them? The pokey tool that you use to get holes in your spine. So there you go. We have a plan. We're going to make four covers. I'm sure there'll be pages in them because I do have pages printed here. And depending on time, it'll depend on how much work I get done in the books themselves. So I'm just going to tear down, tear down these for now. I do need to um, dye a heap of paper to have some blank pages, of copy paper. So I get my Parisian essence out and it's Saturday. So my first video is done. This is my second. So my husband will appear for breakfast shortly. So maybe do breakfast. Then I might fire up the 
the dyeing process, which will take most of the weekend because I usually like to try and do a huge bunch of it. And because I have been working on those charity journals, I've used every, every bit of coffee dyed paper I had. So and I've been putting it off, putting it off, and this is going to make me get that job done now. So I think breakfast, then I'll get down into the laundry, get set up to do that. And once the papers are sort of run through the bath and laid out to dry, that usually takes about an hour. It is winter here, so it might be a little slower. I can, um, I can then come back, turn on the camera and start playing with some of these covers which will be the start of the processes. Aren't these just so pretty? The um, link for this particular digital print Etsy store is down below, as well as all of the books. I will continue to cut and paste all of that detail across all of the videos, so you don't need to go back and find video number one. You just look straight down to the description. And everything you need to know of what I've been up to is there. Oh, so pretty. Thanks for your patience, everyone, as I've nutted all that out. I think I've come to realise that my issue was I had four journals in my head and only probably 15 videos to do it in. And I don't really want to do videos where I come back each time and go, this is what I've done. I've done this, 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 and this. I sort of just want to craft. So you see the processes I go through instead of me just presenting what I've done. That you know, There is a, a place for that as well. Sometimes you just can't show everything and you want to keep the project moving along. But for these filler videos, the monthly, daily crafting videos, I think... Um, I'm just going to take my time and see how we go. But when you're thinking about a project and you've actually got four different journal styles in your head, you know, I don't know what I was going to do. Because doing one would have been boring. So we're going to do four. Focus on the covers. And then we will see where we're at. So it might be just a case of I stitch in some random pages and then more of a blank um, journal. So there's lots of gorgeous pages in there. Uh, and then one day pick it up and have a play again. But for now, let's just get them made. I'm sure I will do ephemera too because there's just some days you just feel like making something random. And I do have now, oops, that one is one of those pages that I either use that or I play with the seed things on the back. So we won't rip that down anymore. That's a print of... Um, Remember I told you there was a store on Etsy that had scanned the book? Yeah, well, this is the artwork that I got. And it was only like a couple months, which sort of made me think something was a bit odd. And then after I downloaded it and saw it, I had a look at the books and I'm thinking, boy, that has literally been copied, which is a no-no. Unless she was someone in the family and had permission, but no. Then probably about a month later, it was gone. So, yeah, not good. I've deleted my file because it's, it's wrong. It's just not, not right. So, yeah, I don't know. Don't know if we will even use that because, yeah. It's not good. Put that to side. I don't did see that was the other one. I did it twice on that page, just testing my print field. So we will maybe we make a little bag page out of that. Yeah, let's do that. 
and you're thinking, what is a bag page? When I show you, you'll know what I mean. It's where you put two pieces of paper together to create a tuck spot. And we'll have the bunnies on the inside. So they're there in spirit, but not they're not there. Put them together. And hopefully I've torn them down the same size, pretty much. Pretty close. Just need to take a little bit off that one. So those pages go together. I probably will um, run through my bath of Parisian essence, all of these pages too, but I will do a very diluted, diluted um, mix because I don't want to alter the fabric, uh, the, the, um, what do you call it? The colouring of everything too much. But I want to have the feel that the paper's not literally straight out of a printer. So I'll do a really soft essence dye. So it's lightweight. And then, um, yeah, it'll give that old feeling to the paper. It'll take that shiny feel off, if that makes sense. But without altering the colouring too much. So that, that will be joined together and that will become a page in the journal that you can just tuck something into. So that's what we'll use our bunnies for. They can just disappear within there. All right, so I thought I had more pages I printed. Okay, because oh, I've done some back to back. So there's some little tuck spots and things like that on the back of those. That's all right. So I might go and find these here and reprint them because they're only single copies and they are just gorgeous. So they need to be reprinted. Then I've got these frames from my porch uh, prints and the plan is to do something with some dried flowers which have arrived in the mail so let me just show you what i got here so the company that they come from is um leaving echoes so i think that was seven dollars some of them might have been 12 because there was more flowers in the pack but they're a selection of dried flowers so i really want to have a play with those in this journal it sort of feels like something that Edith would have through her her books so I've got a four of them all different colors they actually they've been enhanced I know they sometimes will put dye into water and then as the flower sucks up the dye it'll change color I remember doing that at school in science experiments to watch how a plant continues to drink water after it's been cut and put in a vase. And these look like that's happened. And it was just recently, um, uh, I've told you the story that Pepper went missing and we found Pepper and the lovely lady that found her, we uh, a week later went to a florist and got a beautiful bunch of flowers for her. It was just beautiful. I couldn't help myself. I think I added three bunches together. It was just massive. And then I bought a, a vase that she could put them in. Plus, I didn't know if she would be home when we went around. So at least I had the vase with water in it and the plants, the, the flower bunch could sit there. Anyway, I'm looking at this flower arrangements in front of me and it was spectacular. And there were some flowers that were this type of blue but they look like chrysanthemums. So I asked the lady, you know, what, what is that? And she said they were chrysanthemums, but they were a, a big double head one. And like they were the size of my hands, they're huge. And they had this blue tone. And then the more I looked, I could see there were some pink ones and things like that. And she said, naturally they're white, but they once again sat them in the blue dye and they had taken it up and turned them into this soft blue tone and then she'd built an arrangement around them stunning absolutely beautiful so 
I would say, and I'm going to say yes, they are. These are manipulated like that because there's flowers there that I can see don't come in those colours, especially that one. That's baby's breath. And there it is in white. And there it is in pink. And that's probably more common. When you do press your flowers, they tend to go muted tones. See those there? Where these are so poppingly pink, which tells me they've been artificially dyed. And um, yeah, see so here's some more here. That's probably more natural. And even then, maybe they did... Put a dye in that. They're definitely dyed. So yeah, I'll put the details of this store. She's in Australia leaving Echoes, but there's heaps of them. Heaps of them. When I typed in dried flowers, um, dried flowers in Etsy, all of these similar pictures came up. I even went to eBay and had a little look and you can buy them out of Hong Kong. Uh, similar price, maybe slightly cheaper. But, um, and they all look like these photos. So my guess is there's a manufacturer um, based in Hong Kong and the Etsy store folks are on selling them. So you should be able to find those. And I'm hoping to use some of these little frames to create like little, little, yeah, anyway. That's a project for one day. I don't think there are any pages in here that I can trim up. That's sort of into the ephemera, journal cards, flips, backgrounds, some unusual pages that just caught my eye. I don't know how I'll use them. Looks like a magazine that come out in the day that sort of spoke about something in the world of nature. Maybe a publication from a museum, which I thought was an interesting element for our journals. And that one there is another reprint because I really got some of those lost to ephemera ideas okay everyone i'm going to leave video number two at that stage we've got a plan i need to go and dye paper i need to give these a bit of a dye to make them feel a little bit more old world and i need to reprint some of these and now that i'm doing four journals i need to go and gather more pages because yeah i need more okay all right, I'll leave you with that and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.